How's it going, everyone? It's Avi for my social. A thousandth day is January 29th, 2021. And today, we're, of course, going to talk about the major Midwest and Northeast snowstorm that could bring over a foot of snow in some areas in the Northeast and potentially the Midwest as well. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. So as you can see right here, there's a GFS forecast model. You see that there's a relatively strong low pressure system just off the East Coast as of right now. And we're seeing an extending band of snow extending from New England as far south as the Delmar Peninsula and extending to as far west as the Ohio River Valley even. So this is a pretty broad and large storm and it, it becomes concerning because that when we see a storm this broad, that typically means that we're going to see heavy snow from this um, in at least some place within this area especially when it's this strong at 991 millibars so what's actually going to happen with this storm is that there's a trough that's going to move through the western half of the united states bring feet of snow in the higher elevations of california so watch out for that and heavy rain throughout california and potentially and flash flooding and mudslides could be the issue over there However, as this storm continues its trek on eastward, we're going to see it encounter an area of unstable air where there's going to be a lot of cold air on the western side of this storm, which will interact with this warmer Gulf of Mexico air, which is filled with water vapor. It's very humid. And as that cold, dense air attempts to filter into that l lighter, less dense, warm Gulf of Mexico air, it's going to force a lot of that water vapor upwards and will create a lot of convection and a lot of precipitation and will rapidly intensify this storm once it hits the Midwest, as you see, the area of precipitation grows significantly within only a 12 hour period because 36 hours from now, approximately a uh, day and a half from now, it's only bringing a couple showers to Oklahoma and Texas. However, this will broaden to the point where this this rain extends all the way from the Midwest and it's already approaching the Mid-Atlantic and this will result in a heavy snowfall threat and a, a high accumulation snowfall th throughout the Midwest. And I would say from the Midwest, it's pretty much certain you're going to see receive a major type of snowstorm from this. It depends what you classify as major. I classify this snowstorm as major in the Midwest because you're going to receive over six inches in multiple areas, which I do consider major since six inch over six inches of snow causes a lot of havoc. Even snowstorms that only dumped like two inches or three inches of snow I've seen cause a lot of havoc and to talk about six especially when it could dump at a fairly fast rate at times especially right around Chicago and the southern Great Lakes region then I do consider this storm definitely major for the Midwest and I do think there's most a good there's a good amount of confidence that we're going to see a major snowstorm in the Midwest. There are some uncertainties in the small specific details. The forecast models need to iron out, such as where that rain snow line will be, because that will be a huge, that will be a huge determinant of what, how much snow you receive in a specific location, especially if you're close to that rain and snow line. So, um, however, for the most part, I would expect a good area of around four to eight inches right around the Midwest and potentially even more than that in some localized areas. But it gets a little uncertain by the time we head into the Northeast because this initial low pressure system that's expected to dump a lot of snow in the Midwest is expected to weaken. And then the forecast models are expecting a new low pressure system form just off the coast of North Carolina. And it becomes uncertain when the computer the forecast models need to predict an area of a new area of, of a low pressure to form because they're not sure where exactly it'll form. It's still uncertain and how it'll move and how sh and how strong this will be, which will all play a factor in where this storm goes and how much snowfall you'll receive in a specific location. But the GFS does form it right around North Carolina as the convection on the eastern side of the storm will out pretty much outweigh what's happening on the western portion of this storm. So this low pressure will weaken and pretty much combine 
eventually with this slow pressure system and this is where the center of attention will be when it comes to where all the air molecules are rotating around eventually once the convection really starts going right around North Carolina and just off the coast where the cold air is going to interact with the warmer Gulf Stream air and that's going to create a lot of convection along the, co on the, along the east coast to create that low pressure system and you see that that low pressure system rapidly intensifies down to the 990s to low 990s close to 980s and you see that it's something a lot of snow throughout New Jersey throughout southern New England throughout Pennsylvania however it becomes uncertain because it really because the computer models are in a little bit of a dilemma of how far north and south this storm will go or how far east or west this low pressure system will go because while the gfs model is favoring more of a northward track where it affects more of pennsylvania and upstate new york and it's also favoring a track that's a low that's closer to the coast where it affects where it, it affects met many more people more inland the european is almost a complete opposite where it's taking a storm much further south to the point where northern pennsylvania northern new jersey and even upstate new york is experiencing no snowfall from this latest run of the european model and it isn't until this low this new low pressure system forms and moves up the east coast that we will see snow in northern new jersey but it won't be it isn't as much as initially anticipated from the european model which is quite interesting so let me show you guys the forecast four days from now and while the european does bring the low pressure system relatively close to the coast it doesn't expect a lot of that precipitation to extend further inland such as pennsylvania or upstate new york however the snow is still affecting philadelphia or philadelphia's right along the border of the snow and dry line pretty much and so is new york city as pretty much is mainly a coastal event for the northeast which is still a very populated sector don't get me wrong but is it as affecting as much people as anticipated with the gf um with unlike the gfs where the gfs is leaning towards a lot more snow going further inland to a point where it's still affecting Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and Washington DC and cities further inland and even and this snow even extends as far west as Ohio while the European model isn't really bringing much of that snow beyond the I-95 corridor which is quite interesting because typically the i-95 corridor would be the rain and snow line but in this case it seems like the i-95 corridor in the european models case will be the difference between the snow and the dry um, sections so it's going to be interesting to watch the reason why the european model is forecasting a more southward track and let's track a little bit further offshore is due to this strong canadian ridge as the european now is expecting this ridge to be a little bit stronger than expected so as a result it's expecting a little bit more of a southward track to the point where it doesn't affect as much people further northward and it moves a little bit further southward as a result of this very strong ridge that's currently bringing temperatures 10 to 20 degrees below average in the northeast and this will be the same ridge that that will be steering the storm further southward come Mondays um if the European model was correct of course however the GFS it's still leaning towards bringing the snow further north and a much broader area of snow where it affects a lot more people and it's still a major threat for a lot more people however the European isn't as lenient as affecting as much people however I will continue to say I will say that the European model is favoring a made still a major snowstorm at least somewhere in the northeast but it changed but the European model changed exactly where the worst of the snowfall will be located because I remember yes in yesterday's run the European was leaning towards being a ton more snowfall throughout Pennsylvania northern New Jersey and a lot of New England however now I'm noticing the European model is bringing majority of the snowfall closer to the Delmarva Peninsula and throughout Virginia unlike yesterday where 
the worst of the snowfall was around Pen- in and around Pennsylvania and New Jersey. So it's very interesting to see this shift in the forecast. And we definitely need to keep a, a close eye on this one, especially when this new low pressure system forms, because it's going to be very uncertain to say the very least. And any small differences in the forecast can make a big difference. Um, and you see that just northwest of the I-95 corridor, the snowfall drops significantly. It's not that it just dropped to a couple inches. It dropped to zero inches in an area that was initially expected to get the worst hit. Let me show you guys um, to further exemplify this point. So this was the European Mall today and this was yesterday where nearly a foot of snow was located right around, was expected right around the Poconos Mountains. And today, it's a lot less as the snowfall forecast shifted a lot more eastward as the low pressure is expected to say a little bit more off the coast. So, um, as so obviously there's a lot of uncertainty and you're wondering what's the current snowfall forecast for this storm. So here's this current snowfall forecast that I made and I did make several adjustments regarding the shift in the European models forecast. Not, now I'm expecting a little bit less snow further northward, such as Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, and upstate New York. However, not as low. I wouldn't go as low as saying zero inches of snow just yet, like the European model is saying, because the GFS, again, is still a very reliable model, and it's still bringing a good area of nearly six, of over six inches of snow right around um right around the Pocono Mountains and New and northern New Jersey still. So I can't disregard the GFS forecast just because the European model made the major shift. However, I will make pretty much mix the two together and I came up with this snowfall accumulation forecast of three to six inches for now. And like I said, like I keep saying this forecast is subject to change. I wrote that down in the bottom left. Um, just um, just so you guys wouldn't make any assumptions just yet. I don't want you guys to make any major assumptions just yet. However, I will say that for a lot of the Midwest, I would say it's definitely more accurate and more likely that this snowfall forecast will be generally around the ballpark. However, for the Northeast, it still remains highly uncertain of exactly where that low pressure system will be located and how much snow you'll receive because when both the computer models are still disagreeing, um, even when we're getting closer to the actual date of the storm, it become it's still an uncertain situation that I don't want to make any um, I don't want to make any promises with the snowfall forecast just yet because still a lot could change. But you see that there's still major snowfall right around Delmar Peninsula, New Jersey, and Maryland, and there's definitely something to watch if you're around that area. So. You might be asking what will determine or what will change the potential the the potential um snowfall forecast for you guys. Well, it really depends on how far north the storm goes, how close it goes it will go, and that really all depends on the position of the jet stream and this position of the ridge that's just the north of it. If it goes a little bit further south, the storm will move a little bit further south and bring a little bit less snow to New England and the northern northeast. However, if it were a little bit weaker this bridge and we're more likely to see that snow dump a little bit more to the north and up in a much broader area and it also really depends on the position of the jet stream as well if the jet stream dip is a little bit closer then expect the low pressure to be closer and a little bit stronger because the jet stream dip would be more pronounced in the scenario where the jet stream is closer to the coast and however, if the jet stream dip isn't as pronounced and we're seeing a little bit more of a westerly wind, I mean, in, yeah, a westerly wind direct component with the jet stream winds, and we're more likely to see the storm accelerate quicker to the, to the east, which would limit the snowfall definitely across the northeast. We just have to wait and see. However, I will say that the confidence for a major snowstorm somewhere in the mid, I would say the it's pretty, we're pretty confident we're going to receive over five inches of snow throughout the Midwest. So I'd, so I'd prepare in the Midwest for around six to 
12 inches, I would say, like my forecast model states, where you could receive, where it's expected you guys will receive over six to 12 inches, as both computer models are agreeing on that fact. However, from Northeast, just, just stay tuned, but I would prepare now if you're in the Northeast, it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, because and because there could be that quick shift in the forecast where you're suddenly under a foot of snow when just the day before you were under little to no snow. So just keep that in mind if you're in the Northeast and stay tuned to your local forecast throughout the next several days because this is going to be a big one to watch over the next several days. But anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather calls. Make sure to like if you like this video. And make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather-related content. And I hope you guys have a good day.